How you doing, everybody? This is Jimmy the Bull at MuscleMonster.com. I'm here today to share with you my personal power straps. I'll help you become the best power bodybuilder I can possibly be. Training through injury, gaining strength. And now I'm going to share with you how you can get the extra mile in the gym, pushing and pulling and getting through the exercise. These are the best power straps you'll ever use. Go to MuscleMonster.com to get the full demonstration. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. I love it! And we are back for another installment of After Hours. I'm Dave Palumbo with John Romano, and we're joined by the entire WAC Pack who are trickling in little by little, as they always do. And uh, guys, this week, finally, we have some masculine stuff going on this week. Uh, guys are fighting in the street in New Orleans, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I love, don't you like love to hear that? Like in, in the past, I would have said, oh, I don't want to hear about fighting, but I'm actually glad that some some real men with testosterone are actually beating the shit out of each other again. Started with Armin in Texas with the fucking baseball. <laughs> well, that was a, that was a, he was uh, ransacked basically, you know, he was, uh, uh, you know, was, you know uh, Armin, I got to say, as, as bad of a situation, don't take this the wrong way, but as bad of a situation as that was, Given the situation, the outcome was uplifting because I guarantee you they never expected you to walk around a fucking corner. <laughs> it was like, oops, yeah. we fucked with the wrong guy. Your wife know? wasn't there though, John. So no, I know, I know, I know. That's I'm, that's what I'm saying. It was leave all that aside. I'm saying that those guys didn't get over on on anybody is the uplift. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they were out to do no good and they got fucked up. And that's that's I mean, everybody's moving here. Um, I mean, like you, times that, you know, the, the roads were not crowded, like the roads are crowded all day now, like in, in Dallas and uh, Fort Worth yeah. area. It's just it's crazy here. You license plates from everywhere every week. It's just because they're leaving pretty... California. That's why, Armand. Yeah. In so. droves. But uh, I, I love this this whole Nate Diaz story, though, um, with uh, the, you know, the guy who started with him in, in New Orleans there on the street. And he like put the guy in a sleeper hold in like three seconds, because you know it, it. It's nice to know that there were real men, biological men. I'm talking about. You know, I don't know what anyone's <laughs> definition. Everyone's definition of a man changes from day to day. But I'm talking about biological men who still want to beat the crap out of each other. Um, there's not many of them around anymore, John. So this is a it's, a it's a breath of fresh air. Actually, I don't know why they arrested Nate Diaz though. Probably because. He didn't fit into the woke definition of uh, what a man should be, right? He's not well, arrested. He's, he's not arrested yet. They had all the warrants out for him, but I think he's going to leave New Orleans and probably just never come back. I heard he stay. I heard he's hiding at Amin's house. Is that true? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what's good about it. I mean, what's telling about it is Nate could have danced all over this guy if he wanted to. He put him out in a sleeper hold. Okay, he's probably drunk too. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, you learn in bouncing school 101 is you don't hit a drunk guy. So, you know, if you put him out, I mean, your sleeper hold is the least violent, easiest way to neutralize the situation. If he wanted to fuck with the guy, he could have fucking broken every bone in his face. So oh, yeah. I, I think why, the why, why are they arresting him if he didn't actually, you know, exactly. He's defended out. himself. He puts the guy out painlessly and, right. and they're after him. That's fucked up. And there's video, of it, so it's not like all. you know you can't see what happened, you know. Right. And the crazy part is the guy's going online talking about he's going to find Nick Diaz and beat the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he after he got his ass kicked guys. already. You know? <laughs> I guess that those is stories are, those stories are also uplifting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so oh, scary. Yeah. Just you know, that's why I stopped bouncing. You know, I live uh, you know by Deep Ellum, which is a huge. Uh, rock area in dallas and i would still bounce there occasionally just because it was fun you get to see bands you like and 
you know, you take care of them. So whatever bands in town, you know, if you're a fan of theirs, you get to, you know, you talk to them, whatever, set them up, give them what they need. And uh, it's just so dangerous, you know, doing bouncing. Like if you have to, you know, hurt somebody, you know, you're going to go to jail. They're going to, you know, prosecute you. It's just, it just sucks. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in Corcoran, uh, I had a Sully named Ron. He was a former professional boxer, not a bodybuilder, but just he had really heavy hands. And he was uh, playing basketball with a guy named Matt. And they got in an argument over something about basketball. And uh, <clears throat> Matt starts mouthing off to Ron. And Ron said, you know, you better stop or I'm going to sock you. And he goes, well, what's the matter? Your soccer broken? Ron just went <laughs> one hit. Matt <laughs> head spun around. He was flattened out. He <laughs> split it open all the way from his ear to his jaw. And he was laying there, just lay, uh, laid out unconscious. I told Ron, get out of here. Go go in the cell. Go away. So a few minutes later, the guards see. They take Matt away in a stretcher. The next day, Matt comes back, and he comes up to me. He goes, he sucker punched me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick his ass. I'm like, Matt, he told you he was going to hit you, and he hit you one time, and you went to sleep. <laughs> I said, Ron will kill you. I said, he, he just hit you once. I said, you just need to leave this alone and go away. <laughs> There he is, the one and only Valentino. Yeah, you know. Holy people, fuck, man! I've been sitting backstage like a momo. Oh, no, you weren't. You were sitting in, in your own stage because we weren't backstage in our show. That's for sure. Well, it says I was backstage. How did I? Get I in think this you room? were in the uh, the alternate universe. Uh, after Usually, our green show. room. Well, I don't know if it says backstage. Greg, you, you know, there's probably an alternate universe where we're all actually trans. Uh, you know, we're all females in. Uh, you know, and doing this I'm show. A then that we're is a family. really fucking bizarre statement to make, dude. What the fuck? Are you, then we're all ugly. They say there's an infinite number of universes out there with yeah. alternative, yeah. Uh, you know, versions of ourselves, and you know, there could be a universe where all of us have decided that we uh, we want to be women and we identify as women and we have wigs on and all that kind of stuff, and we're doing this show dressed as women. You know, oh possible. My God. One of one of many <laughs> possibilities. Well, well, wait a minute. Can I just say some? We've succeeded. What? We've actually brought up trannies on a show. So but this is this is probably like the hundredth show. <laughs> People are going to start talking, you know, like we there got, are. Are. We, got this, are. We, got, we got this affliction over here. This is the <laughs> most fucked up thing you could imagine. At least we address all the topics and, and you know, that are good. No, are actually on. we omit them in favor of this fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I, I've been watching this um, document. I actually watched two documentaries this past weekend. One was on Pele. Um, which, oh yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw it's that. On Netflix. Awesome. It's great. It's really, awesome. really good. I was right. crying. I don't know about you. I was literally tears are coming out of my eyes watching the documentary. Yeah, Pele really was the greatest cool. soccer player of all time. For those people, the young people who might be watching the show, who don't know, he invented that flip over yes, kick thing, the bicycle kick. Yeah. Yeah. Bicycle yeah. Kick. First of but, all, he was the first million dollar uh, athlete ever. Oh, you're right. You're 100 right. That's right. Yeah, he was. In yep. the mid seventies, I remember him making a million dollars, and I, people thinking, "Can you imagine athletes making a million dollars now?" Yeah. Today, guys who sit on a bench, sign out of college, sign for like six million, and yeah. shit's crazy. Yeah, man, it was nuts. I, it was I remember, nuts. remember that? That was like mid seventies when yeah. he first. I remember that thinking, like, "Holy shit, this guy's making a million dollars to play a sport." Now today, that's so common. It's it's not even funny. And then the tennis players started making money. Yeah. Hey, wait. You know what's they, funny? I I always forget this. I don't know why, but you know, my girlfriend's eye doctor is Renee Richards. Speaking of trannies, I forgot about that. I I don't know why I've never fucking thought about that. We keep talking about trans. I forgot all about that. That because speaking of tennis players, John just remind me. Uh, Renee Richards is actually my girlfriend, my niece, my my sister who passed away. But, you know, all of them, they all go to Renee Richards, who's a doctor right here in the town I live in. That's I, the eye doctor here. And she's yep, still man. fucking like 90 something, 90 years old or whatever the hell she is, still being a doctor. There was an, there was another tranny that was tennis champion or transsexual or I forgot, changed her name from was a dude to a girl. I forgot the name, but yeah, but remember, this is a Richards who was super no, this famous. Is, this way, I gotta show this play. I gotta this was show way this before play. that, way before like Billie Jean King era. 
Um, yeah, that's Renee Richards. Yeah, I think he's right. I think Richard he's right. I got, I got, I got to show the pay no, it, was, I got to... it was Christina something. No, you have to get a Christina Jorgensen who was a movie yes, star. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Christina, but that's like this. Fred knows every famous like uh, tranny. It's unbelievable. Every chick with a dick, he's got right. Every, every he's got it. They got don't have post. dicks. They got to cut off. <laughs> no, she's she's my my. We've been at the eye doctor a million times. It's not. They my have eye Thanksgiving doctor. dinner with her. She stayed at her his house. Uh, the yeah, his mother, his mother made her meatballs. Yeah, that's right. He, as a matter of fact, she came over when Lee Haney was there, and I think Lee Haney hooked up with her. Yeah. Oh, God, don't say that, Dave. No, she, <laughs> she hurt Lee Haney's eyes. That's kidding me. That's like, that's like, that's like the, the total extreme opposite of possibility in the uh, real Would Sean Ray right? stay there? Sean Ray hooked up. Dude, I, I love Lee Haney. <laughs> Dude, I, I love Lee Haney, but when he was here, his eyes would be open a little bit. Did I tell you about that? He didn't trust you. That's why you you were white. You know, you were staying with white folks. You he know, was you, was his... <laughs> well, you could see the eyeball glistening when he was sleeping. Yeah, you know, like something. He didn't like trust the Valentinos. I... He had to keep one eye open when he slept. Yeah. My niece right. sleeps like that. Looks like a dead body sometimes. Like you get the eyes roll back <laughs> in the head and you're looking over, you're like, what the fuck? You know? Some people's eyelids don't close all the way. That's why. Yeah. 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 Did you have I'm one sure of those? Eyes look at did, did you have one of those little black Sambo lawn jockeys out front back in those days when Lee came over? <laughs> no. <laughs> now we're really gonna get canceled. <laughs> oh now yeah, now we're done. Yeah. Right, Every wait, wait, Italian wait. had one of those. It was the little jockey, you remember with the I remember there's still a few of them around the neighborhood. You see him. <laughs> you have one now, don't you? No, no, no. That's the only statues we don't have here. We, we had found to get rid of those. Greg doesn't have. <laughs> we hey, had we to get rid of those. Lawn jockey. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got, I got to play the Pele video because I want uh, this this goal in the World Cup in 1970. That was crazy. Uh, Everybody Pele, remembers this. Yeah. Pele didn't want to like play this in, in the didn't want to do the World Cup anymore. But the government, the, the tech dictatorship of, of Brazil at the time, they didn't give him a choice basically. So he did right. it. And uh, this shot luckily, is sick. it was his great greatest victory ever. But uh, let me pull this video up here. This was hold on, we got Mr. G here too. Hold on. I think I think more people know where they were when he made this shot than where they were when they. I don't think it. a lot of people were even alive who watch our show. But let's 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 play it That's anyway. Incredible. Can yeah, make right. it it's like Anyone who's played soccer knows how hard that is to time something like that. He was the greatest of all time. He did oh, that yeah. reverse kick. Remember the kick where he went the bicycle for ball? kick. Yeah, he was. So great. that's like getting punched in the face by Ali. That getting that getting hit. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just the timing necessary to do that is is unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's the Babe Ruth of 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 soccer, without a doubt. It's like all those headers causes. Uh, you know, I played soccer like um, you know almost pro, but uh, they call it this is herniated disc. Most soccer players have herniated disc in their neck from. Oh you know, really? From, I didn't even know that. Hanging the head. Yeah. yeah. Because you got to think about that pressure, that ball, how fast it's coming at you, and you got to, you know, hit that thing, hit, hit that thing. And so that's where I got a couple of my hernia discs from before I even started weight training. So just, my I'm sure son, a lot of the guys are weight training now. So my son and son play soccer. He he, the ball came to him. I don't even I because I play with them in the driveway, throw the ball, and I let him head the ball. They, my daughters think it's hysterically funny. So <laughs> he's in the game, and the ball comes, and he hits it with his head. It was like a perfect header. I don't even know how he even knew what, what the hell he was doing. Because no kid would use his head. And he got a penalty. Because kids under the age of, I don't even know what, are not allowed to head the ball in the soccer. The, the soccer what? Ball. Wow. Can you believe it? They got a penalty against him because he used wow. his head. I said, well, you know, this is part of the game. Oh, well, we right. don't want the kids. Don't want the we kids want... to what? Because they, they don't want the kids to They want to play. No, no, they don't want they don't want the kids to get like brain damage or anything from the, yeah. from the oh, no they, they, they want you to have you go to MMA to get blasted the kid in the face four hundred times with with boxing gloves. That's okay. Why don't they just tip <laughs> they, want they, just... Un, they want you to unteach them that so you can teach it to them again later? <laughs> <laughs> They'll actually get more injured by doing that. You know, like, I remember you, when you go into the game like like on tiptoes, that's how you get hurt. Yeah, I think it's the whole idea of what these expectations are for parenting that you gotta like. I, I don't know where it's coming from, man. It's, it, it's it's like shelter, build a bubble to you know protect them at all costs, and th we're churning out fucking pussies, man. When yeah, it whips, exactly. Yeah. Bicycle kick. Hold on. Here's yeah, that's the part. we played yeah, rough the fuck out on the kick. street. Oh Watch my this. god! Only Pele can oh, do this. Oh, this is crazy. Look at the height. Yeah, only Pele can oh, do that. Oh my god. 
That's from the movie Victory with Sylvester Stallone. Right, but Stallone. He, actually did it, he did it in games too, though. Yeah. But that's from the movie Victory. I know. I've seen him do it. That fucking guy's amazing. Holy movie too, Victory. Remember that? With Sylvester yep. Stallone. Sylvester Stallone played the goalie. Yeah, I love that movie. Is that from the yeah. Olympics? Is that when they played the Ger in, the, in the Olympics? Yeah, they played the Germans. They were in the in the Nazi uh, pig, uh, POW camp. Do yeah. you even realize the degree of coordination you need to freaking just connect with the ball yeah. in, in, when that move? Let alone the goal, John. You know, unbelievable. Yeah, that is so unbelievable. If yeah. you play soccer, it's not that hard though. It's just kind of you get kind of get used, to, you know, just like any other sport. So it's just. It's, 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 I'm I'm I played soccer. Good. There wasn't. I didn't see anyone ever do a bicycle kick into a, <laughs> yeah, for a goal. <laughs> Wait, I'm, you know, I'm going to try that. I want to try doing shit that. right now. George, you need to do it on a surfboard. You need to be riding a wave, and a guy will just <laughs> come by on, on a jet ski, toss a ball, and you do the bicycle kick yeah. off the surfboard. I can yeah, do that. Wall <laughs> and. And maybe like a dolphin could get, throw it back to you. That, that would be <laughs> or bounce it on yeah. his nose. I got, I got a new bodybuilding division. Surfing bodybuilding. You do moves while you surf. I do it all the time when I'm at the end of the wave. I'll, I'll, I'll go like this. I'll go like this. I'll go like this. Arr, when I claim the wave at the end. <laughs> you know, Ronaldo's playing for the Arab, te Arab team now, the Saudi team. And, you know, they had to really? uh, allow him. To live with because he's not legally married to his, uh, you know, his it's his girlfriend. It's not his wife. So they had to allow him to live with her in, in Saudi Arabia because he's playing for that Saudi team now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they threw a big fit the other day because in the game um, people were uh, chanting Messi's name, and he grabbed his crotch, Ronaldo, as he was running off the field. And if somebody else did that in a soccer game, they would be, you know, tortured. Right. So. But no, no. Of course, Ronaldo gets a pass, but they're still throwing a fuss about it. I mean, what what's going on with? The, I noticed that the um, the Saudis are, are spending a lot of money on sports. They have that golf division where a lot of the top golfers had gone over to the Saudi. Uh, they left the PGA tour and they go into the Saudis because they're paying for more money. So, well, what do you, I mean, what do you the think soccer, they the soccer division sucks. I mean, that uh, you know, like. It sucks, but I mean, it's just they have a lot of money. Right now it pay. Well, if they're going to spend the money and get all the top players, it's not going to suck for very long, don't you think? I don't know how many players are going to go over there. I mean, of course, Ronaldo's treated like a god, but how many people is going to go live in Saudi Arabia? I mean, show me the money. Yeah, show they me pay the money. Enough. Pretty, it's pretty nice over there in, in some Look of the at all nice the bodybuilders that went over to Kuwait for uh, Bader Badai when he was paying I'm, all that I'm, money. I'm telling you, man, the, the, yeah. the UAE is. It has some very pretty places. I'm surprised Dubai hasn't forked out more money. I, I know will, Qatar, Qatar built that whole, you know, they had the World Cup there. They built like, you know, what, eight stadiums? Like they, they were like, they had outdoor air conditioning. Yeah, it was stadiums. crazy. I saw it. They was spent like, what, like, like just $100 billion. Dollars or something like that. It, was, it was insane. It, 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 was, so it was immaculate. It was it was gorgeous. The stadiums were gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gorgeous. They and spare no expense so over there. Their hospital, you know, in the top in the world, they they really uh they really are going uh to try to hit the top as far as they can. It comes to sports medicine and sports in general. I think okay. Dubai is going to be coming up soon just because of the tourism thing. I don't know how they're going to do it. They're probably going to host some events. Well, Dubai Dubai pur is purposely changed its economic yeah. focus from oil because they know it's running out. To, yeah. to tourism and and you know conventions and all of, all you know building the city as a destination for mostly right. tourism. So yeah. I mean, it, 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 the evolution's incredible. Those islands that they made where they have houses on them and it's crazy yeah. shit, man. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, how about the ski slope inside the mall? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Wave that's pools. The island, the islands actually is, is so far. I think it's failed because of COVID. I don't know if they're going to pick it back up or not. But that was a beautiful project that they were trying to do. Make the world basically on um, on different islands of same oh the little world yeah that kind of that's that that will eventually pick back up but the, but the palm islands were all the, the houses were yeah that's beautiful yeah and they got the, am, the smart city who's been to dubai the I, mean, I've been to dubai. I haven't been to, i've been to qatar not dubai no. i've been i've been or, to dubai the twice. formula one track in dubai is insane ferrari world has the giant tent set up there 
you see this building? This is the Burj Khalifa. Yeah, the biggest awesome. build, tallest building in the world. Right in front of it is is this is the uh, the Dubai Mall. I um, sat there. There's a restaurant out there. One of my uh, clients took me out to eat uh, with the uh, who was with me. I can't remember who's with me now. Um, what's his name? Sid was with me, I think. Right? Yeah. And we um, we were sitting there eating watching this building and at night there's a, a million like a billion lights on the outside of this building and they have a light show the building changes colors and there's all kinds of different graphics that pop up on this building it's one of the most incredible and they play music kind of like at the uh bellagio hotel that, that go, coincides with the with the light show exactly. it's one of it, you think you're on another planet basically it's it's wow. unbelievable and this is just one small little part of Dubai. And, and inside the mall, they have the largest fish tank in the, in the world with sharks in it. And it's, it's, you would think that this fish tank, because it weighs so much, would be on the first floor. It's not. It's like on the second or third floor of the mall, <laughs> which tells you the reinforcements on that mall that must be there <laughs> to hold that kind of weight. It's technologically... It makes New York City look like a fucking cesspool. You know? It future. is a cesspool. That's why. <laughs> it is a cesspool. <laughs> it's it's I mean, no, no, no offense to anyone likes New York, but it definitely has a distinct uh, odor of urine. Yeah. It is a I'm just saying, it, it's a shithole compared to what these, you know, what these 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 Middle Eastern countries are doing. <laughs> they actually just hired rat hunters here in New York City. Did Fuck they really? Yeah, because the rap problem's so bad. It's so bad. You, you know, and they were saying, you can't fix the rapper. You're never going to get rid of the rats. You can kill them. They keep coming back. Got to get rid of the dirt. You know, yeah. the shit, the garbage. Stop throwing garbage all over the streets and shit. Right. Chinatown. You know, but, dude, there's more rats in New York City than anywhere in the world. It's like the sickest thing. It's sick. They're, 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 fucking, they're everywhere. They're gigundo. They're like dogs and shit over there, you know? My yeah, girlfriend got bit by a rat. Too. You know, I was talking that. about that, Greg, not too long ago. They hired people. And you're like, yeah. There's no point. There's like, there's no point. To they hired. You know. They have a. They actually have a rat czar. It's a woman. They just hired. She's like the czar. <laughs> and they, they have all these. And there's actually even a, even the residents. They go out and they have like dogs and shit that hunt the rats. Yeah. They do all this stuff. They show. They've made documentaries. On, but you can't stop them because you have to stop what's causing the rats. The filth. Yeah, right, so Phil, garbage. They have a solution to the problem, believe it or they not. They said Chinatown. They, First of all, I I've seen, seen cockroaches literally that are fucking huge. I mean, yeah. I've seen cockroaches. I can solve the cockroach problem and the, and the rat problem. Very. Oh, easy. they're right on the street. Oh, I know you're gonna say. You you know, listen, you get all these Burmese pythons that they complain ah. about in the Everglades down here, and you let them loose in New York City over the summer. They'll eat all the rats up when I winter so. comes. When winter comes, they'll all die because they can't handle the cold. And I'll then as far what, as the as far as the um, the uh, roach problem, they're basically just big crickets. So you got to release a whole bunch of water monitors into the sewers and let them eat up all the freaking cockroaches. What everywhere. the hell is a water monitor? It's they're a big lizard. lizard. They're lizards, but they can swim. And Don't they, that they, won't help. They, rats matter of fact, they'll eat some of the rats too. So they'll they'll actually do, do <laughs> dual dual purpose. They'll eat the rats and Dude, the those and the, rats and the, will kill the pythons. I swear to God, <laughs> they'll, 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 they fight you'll back. Kill every, you'll kill everything. They fight off. back. Comes, they 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 fight back. back. They they're not passive rats. They fight back. They're aggressive. They go after <laughs> humans. You see, you see, dudes sleeping in the subway. The fucking rat will run right up on them and shit. It's they're fucking crazy. I saw that bit down there by a rat. It's no it's way. Dar it's yeah. like a Darwin experiment. It's the survival of the fittest. <laughs> the, the most aggressive rats win, you know, live the most, and they pre pre procreate. Excuse me. Yeah, she That's had open toe shoes on, and she went to the fucking thing came at her, and she went to kick it. It bit her right on her fucking toe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you never hear you never hear these stories anywhere else, but from people who actually live in New York. Because oh, right. no one wants to hear this. It's bad for New York, no matter what you do. So, it, but it's the truth. It's a shithole. Every single person that either I'm related to or friends with that lives in New York still says the exact same fucking thing. And and you don't hear it anywhere else. You don't hear it on the news. You don't hear it. These lunatics want to live there. Still. I know. I, 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 the, but still the building the you too. can't. You can't get a, a fucking you can't get like a pest control guy in a building. It's, it's they can't kill them. Right. They're in there's the, a simple solution. I was in the fucking 
My you move daughter, out of the building and you go someplace else. You go to Florida. Florida. If there's no people, there's no rats because there's nothing to eat. They're eating right. the food exactly. from the people that are dropping it on the floor. Right. Dave, I was with this girl from Allerton Avenue in the Bronx. You guys have done uh, Allerton Avenue in the Bronx. Is yeah, it a no. dude? It's a ghetto ass. She was Puerto Rican. Bro, this shit. I would lay on a floor of rats and be underneath the couch. They were every running across. I was like, I'm, I want to get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> and you know what you got to worry about? The cockroaches. Because oh. you could, if you took a handful of sand and threw it everywhere, that's how many cockroaches there were. Dude, they were little baby ones and giant ones on the ceiling. And yeah. you know what? You got to watch because if you take off your jacket or whatever, you bring that shit back. Yeah. You, know, you bring that home. The rats, they, she had to keep everything silverware, everything in a refrigerator because that's the only place the rats wouldn't go. You open up the cupboards, it was like a horror movie. It's like, holy fuck, the rats would they ran. I, no. I, I told the story in, in MD where the fucking rats ran, they were jumping. In. The garbage pail was going like this. She threw them out the window. I'm like, yo, that's not going to fucking help. You know what I mean? It's, it's a horror movie, right? Yeah. It's typical New Yorker keeps, yeah, the it cereal is. In, keeps the cereal in your refrigerator. Yeah, right. You go to any guy's house in New York and you open a refrigerator. If you eat cereal, the cereal boxes are in the fridge. Because <laughs> you, you get right in that thing. That. You got to keep it away from the rats and the cockroaches, <laughs> bro. They're bad. All right, so let me, let me ask you this question, Greg. Why do these people stay in, the, in, in these disgusting apartments that they probably pay too much money rent anyway? And they got cockroaches and rats. Why don't they just leave and go someplace else? Because they're else? used to it. Yeah, my girlfriend's whole family. How do you get like, used to that, Greg? My, my girlfriend's family, the whole fucking family, they live in, you know, they live in Passaic, New Jersey, which is like, you know, ghetto area and everything. And it's all fucking, you go to the house. I walk in the house, the cockroaches are where the front door is. Usually you got to wait to get in the kitchen oh, or something. But you know? why do people put <laughs> up with that? They don't have that. No, they they're they're used to it. Come she, on in, Greg. She would play with the mice when they were kids. That's why she's fucking crazy. They got mice and everything. You know, they're all <laughs> over the place. But rats, everything. They, they, they're used to it. They just to them, it's just like part of life. Ah, cockroach. Yeah, you know, they, you know, you can't do anything about it. You can't spray because they're in the walls. They're in the, they're in the apartment next door. They come up wow. the pipes. Yeah, you, know, you could flush it down the toilet. The thing will come right back up. It's they're wow. insane. It's like living in India and you got to live with the king cobras. John, didn't they used to say that? If there was a nuclear fucking war, like you know, we, we were bombed and it was a that if the end yeah. of the earth came, the two things that would live were rats and cockroaches. Yeah. Yeah. Did, isn't that, that the truth? Am I am I dreaming yeah. it? But didn't they no, used to say that the you that's can't that's get rid of it? So, so, yeah, they'll they've lived from the dinosaur era, they've been around. Yeah. yeah. Dude, dude I seen videos of like islands that are desertized out in the middle of the ocean. It's just a little tiny island, like Gilligan's fucking island. And right. there's rats everywhere on those islands because the shipwrecks would happen. Those fuckers would live. They wouldn't drown. They'd swim and they'd make it all the way to shore. And now there's, <laughs> there's, there's fucking rats on deserted islands. Where they, right. How you is that, that possible? Gel, well, see, those rats you can eat because they're not eating garbage. They're eating that's like... Right. That's you know, I'll pass on eating a rat. I'd have to be pretty fucking desperate. Uh, you know, if you had no other food source, you'd be eating them like they were fried and young. Hey. You Great. talk about it. They, they, they eat rats. They eat rats in China. <laughs> they, they eat rats in yeah, Central no, America. They, they South South American eat guinea rats. pigs. Yeah. In Costa Rica, they had this giant kind of rat animal that lived in a tree that they ate. It was amazing. It was really good. Really? Yeah. Did y'all yeah, see that, that story? Of, fuck, wait a minute. It's a. a of the guy that got eaten by that bar. Baby Juana, too. What happened, my Arma? Did you get, uh, this guy in jail, he got eaten alive by bed bugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, really? He complained about it. He's like, you know, I, like yeah. there's bed bugs all in my bed. I'm being eaten. Like, and they kept ignoring him, ignoring him, and they ate him alive. Yeah. 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 Hey, is that true? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, up. it just true. happened. Yeah. Um, it's true. You know, usually jail is very, very, very um, yeah. Dude. Usually in jail, it's very it's very uh, clean and sterile. No, bro. In, in a county confinement. jail in New York, in, York, in Westchester, Valhalla, the county jail. Yeah. Yeah. Guys would get fucking cockroaches in their ears. Yep. You oh, know really? I mean? In the jail section, not the new jail where uh. I was. They, in a, in, you know, in, a, in the old jail section, uh. fucking guys, it, it's known for cockroaches. In the ear. Yeah, and and the the huge ears. difference between state and federal jail facilities. Oh, yeah, dude. It was bad. Shit. Yeah, this is just like a jail, like a, I think oh, like a county jail. Look, yeah. County jail is fucking filthy.
Yeah, when I was yeah. in LA yeah. County Jail in the eighties, they had uh, we called them free willies. The re- the mice would run around the floor, and I'd stay up at night and I'd uh, catch them in a bucket. And I, I had at the end of the night, I had like 10, 10 of these mice jumping around in a bucket. Wow. Really? Holy shit! Just what dump it in the toilet because you know the- over there, forget it. So what they yeah, call the glass there. house, the glass tower, the glass house, something like that. Uh, this was the main jail. Yeah, uh, there were so many of them; they were everywhere. What did you do with them after you caught them all? Flush them down the toilet. Yeah, because those toilets, forget it. They yeah. like those where I if was. The toilet, ten the mice. There had to be a million, a million mice, mice in there, probably. If he found, if he actually caught ten mice. There was probably another thousand, yeah. you know, in, in that oh, oh, easily. Yeah. I'd be on the top bunk, they'd just be running around hundreds of them all over the place. And I'd put wow. peanut butter in the bucket. They'd run into it and I'd just scoop it up. Wow. That's yeah, that that'll make you fucking paranoid for sure. Yeah, you have to be so innovative, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want to know how the hell you got a bucket and peanut butter where I was I couldn't even get a pillow. <laughs> I had to sleep with my shirt, sleep with my shirt like a pillow. Holy fuck, man. <laughs> Yeah, they would have tossed yourself and found the peanut butter in a minute. Dude, it was a fucking... <laughs> I slept on a bench press. It wasn't even a... You call that a bed? That shit was like fucking this fat. And a, you know, it was like a bench press. Yeah. Fuck. That was bad. Did, 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 they were asking, did, did Bravo permanently leave the show? I don't know. Is he, or is he on just a well, yeah, What happened to him, Dave? Yeah. Is he on a sabbatical? When I, when I talk to him, that's what he says. He just... He says he loves everybody, but he just doesn't want... The trolls, he just can't stand. He doesn't want the trolls to keep trolling him and then start trolling him on his channel. He yeah, can't so. handle it. But he they're not going to troll him on his own channel anyway? No. They, I, I no. can say, Armand, he said the same thing to me, too. So Because on your own channel, well, he, you can, can delete he can him. take the comments off his own page, I guess. That's why. Right. Well, all that does is empower the trolls. So, I mean, it's... it's yeah, the, or, the Order 66, um, the Lenny, I, I, the Lenny I, I, and yeah. J. Masters assholes. I, I talked to him. I said, you know, I, I said, shit it, right now, it's so unbelievable. I can't believe yeah, people I, go I out said, of their don't way. let it bother you. And he just, just said, Armand, it just does. And I was like, I get it. I mean, I understand if it, if it bothers him, it bothers him. It's just, you know, some people are different. Yeah. It, it, like myself, I don't care. I could care less, you know, but some people, it, yeah. you know, really bothers. Steric yeah. Anthony syndrome, Dave. Yep. He couldn't control it. We used to tell him, ignore these people, ignore them. He couldn't yeah. do it. Remember we were on that show and I was trying to tell him I said I said Derek let's make believe there there's a, there's a there's a forum in 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 Africa somewhere and there's a whole bunch of guys saying bad shit about you and you and he says where what's the address how do you get where is it <laughs> oh no no make believe that there's one yeah. if you don't know it's there who, who do you care what they're saying about you but yeah. dude if you don't have trolls and you you know what I'm dude you 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 Google my name, the first fucking article that comes up is the most hated man. You know, if yeah. I let all that shit bother me, I would have killed myself yeah, a long time ago. I love it. I fucking What's crazy love it. is their fans. They watch every episode. Right. That's so yeah, you're, I never you're, Arma, I never understood the, the psychology. Well, it's, it's, it, it's an it's an exchange. It's it's a it's transaction. Weird. We we are their fodder for their trollism, and we get the clicks. That's so the thing you know, they don't get. <laughs> they're paying us. They're paying us to 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 to, to shit talk us. So go and ahead. You know what, John? Not yeah, only do you get a I'll click, click the keep clicking, keep clicking. That's John, what I not want. only do you get a click, but you get a comment too for the algorithm. That's, you know? a, yeah, that's, that's, that's the engagement, right? Exactly. Fucking I'll Momos think. is stupid. You give it. It's unbelievable. I thank them. I say thank you. You know, keep keep watching. Guys, when, watch you're, when, you're, when you're one of the metrics you assess a brand value is is the ratio between clicks and engagement. Right. So it's 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 one thing to have a bunch of likes. It's another thing to have those like comment or perform some some action. Right. So the higher your your that ratio, the the better it off it is. You know. So. Keep up, keep it up, keep engaging, guys, because uh, you know we're we're enjoying the lift. You know, you're, so, you're stupid. By the way, I just want to say, a guy <laughs> named Vinny, my friend Vinny Altero, watches the show. Vinny, it's oh. Lydia Chang. That's who you and I were talking about the other day, Lydia Chang. Anyway, right. he's this. a big watch fan this. of the show. Watch this, guys. Hold on, he's playing music. I can't, I can't play the music. <laughs> <laughs> This is before anyone did this. He he pioneered, you know, 
talking to the camera. He was, doing, he was doing webcam before it was webcam. He was. <laughs> he, he'd be like, fuck you, haters. Okay, haters. Yeah. <laughs> fuck haters. That's how he started off. <laughs> yeah, he would be flexing, saying, fuck you, haters. Watch, he'll start flipping the wall. <laughs> I miss Derek, man. I do. Oh. <laughs> the guy that I was like, close with him like look, at the synth, look at the synth oil in, in his bicep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not synth oil. I know. Yeah, he loved it. He loved it. He yeah, loved we the had a, a, he used to bug me all the time because y'all were all friends with him. I didn't know him that well. We met at an expo one time and we hit it off. And he right. was like, dude, what, what what how do you put in your shoulders so you can't tell? I was like, I don't put in anything <laughs> in my shoulders. He goes, Bro, you're lying. Like, how do you do it in your shoulders? And he messaged me on Facebook for the next year and kept asking me. I was like, Derek, I do not put anything <laughs> in my shoulders. I said, it looks like your shoulders when you put a bunch of shit in there. That's what it looks like. Remember like, his obsession just... with, with Kim Kardashian's ass, with, with, whether there was anything in there or not? He, he was like, oh, why? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was Dude, I mean, I mean, is, you know, she's got an MRI, and you know, he was like obsessed with it. It was gigantic. Hey, I was talking to him about the Yankees. He hold on, talking, hold on. Oh man, you guys gonna love this one. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, he hold would on. talk to him about the Yankees all the time, bitch, all the time, bro. You see that game last night? <laughs> Huge Yankee fan for ten years. Have bashed me, put me down, ripped me apart, said saying every cruel thing imaginable, the most disgusting. Things putting me down, putting my family down, my mother, my grandfather. You understand? You guys don't get to me, okay? My point is, I put myself out there. Do you? Your avatar picture is a picture of a monkey or a, a funny-looking picture. You don't even have the balls or the audacity to post your real pictures and 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 uh, go against me and compare builds and stuff. But right away, you jump on the bandwagon and you just destroy me and put me down. I'm successful. I have a huge following. I have a website, DerekAnthony.com. I have a successful radio show. And all you losers that say that it sucks, how do you know it sucks? Because, you know, you must be listening to it. Sugar Tits, Vince Goodrum, GH15. You guys are a bunch of punk <laughs> and I If I ever saw any of you in person, I'd kick your ass. But oh. you, you're like a quarter of the size of me living in go. your mommy's basement. That's why you can put <laughs> down know. real bodybuilders, guys that work out, put in time in the gym, have a career, are successful. But you guys have no lives and you're just a bunch of cowards and a bunch of jerk offs. So all the clowns that get big, you think you get to me, you don't. Because I use that shit in the gym to get bigger and better. And all the guys that you put down, you know, all the pros and and and, and people like me who try to you know, make a living doing, you know, you know, radio shows and this and that, you know, I I'm sticking up for all those guys. They don't, they don't want to come on here and give you the time of day, but I'm going to give you the time of the day because I've made my living in my career off the internet. I may have, I have a successful living <laughs> and you guys are just a bunch of je jealous punks with no <laughs> lives living in your mommy's basement, destroying, you know, people who actually do well in life. So this is to all the get biggers. You don't like me? Fuck you. Keep hating because I ain't going anywhere. I'm only 30, even though you say I'm 55. I'm not going to die of AIDS. My build is superior and better than all your little rinky dink, skinny, fucking fat, disgusting builds. Uh, you call me gay. Big whoop. I danced at a fucking gay bar 11 years ago. You guys wish you had a build that you could show off to anybody, a gay man, a straight man, a fat man, a skinny man, a, a, a girl, anything, okay? I used to be a dancer for seven years, dancing for women every weekend, getting girls left and right. I'm straight. I'm gay-friendly. I support the, you know, the gay crowd. I have nothing against gay people. Maybe you're, maybe you're closet. You guys are closet gay, and you want to get on top of me. But you know what? I like women. I don't give a shit what the hell you think. You know, it is what it is. So to all the get biggers over at getbig.com, you guys are a bunch of fucking pussies, cowards. Anytime, any place, come right up to me, Long Island, New York, and say something to my face, and I'll be glad to throw down. Peace. <laughs> Can we end our show with him like that? Yeah. Fuck you know, all the Eric always started out very calm. And then oh, he, no. he, he, he as his blood pressure went up, you know, he got more and more angry. But that's a mild one. We didn't get any yeah. Yeah. 
veins, no arteries, no, 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 no. no. We didn't get normally you get a lot of you know these, yeah. these shows. That was calm. That was a very yeah, that calm. was a calm version. Dude, you yeah. know what's crazy funny? at the Olympia? Remember the Olympia when he went crazy on Vin on Vince? Yeah, I, 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 kept, you know, I, I kept those bad. from fighting. Yeah, said, that was you know, bad though. I didn't he like saved Vince's hey. life. He still denies it. We had him on the show. Yeah. He still won't admit. Listen, it. you know, know what's funny, Dave? Do you want to hear a little funny thing about Derek? He actually what? used to ask me all the time, bro. Can I write a segment of your column, like in a rambling freak? He wanted me to have like Derek's section, and I was like, "Dude, I can't do that. I can't." You know, you know, Steve Blackman would have first of all freaked out. Second of all, I write my own column. I don't need somebody else. You know, what I mean? but he used to ask me to come on. I get video of him telling Robbie direct, "Come on, Robbie." You know, because I was telling him, "I can't." No, because he, 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 Greg, what happened was he got mad at John and I because we told him he couldn't do a. Because we gave him his own show, and then he became too demanding with, with what he thought he had to have his own producer, his own director, his own video editor. He wanted us to provide him like he thought he was Howard Stern or something like that. And so we like, like you can't start. And then he was threatening the guy who was doing the show. He's going to shoot him <laughs> in the foot and everything like that. And, and I'm like, Derek, I, we can't do this. So we had, a, we had to fire him, basically. But dude, can you imagine him the so audacity of asking me? Can I? Well, because that's what he was desperate. He wanted to get yeah. So he was no, getting like. Dude, I'm the one that hooked he had up his own radio, radio show, but he had, I'm the one that got him that gig. Dave, he got the car wash. The, Dave, the I was just gonna say the, that the car the car wash commercial. <laughs> he had a car wash sponsorship. He had a pizza the place. Pizza, yeah, him. The pizza, pizza place. place. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Dude, after he had the fight with you. He's the one who came to me. I told him go to Blog Talk Radio. I'm the one who gave him all that. Oh, you to did start okay. that shit. You know, the his show started out. It was horrendous, and it was actually got pretty good at the end. I would listen to it because he, Derek, was so funny. He was like a parody of himself, and he would tell people off. And you know, his rants were the original rant. No one ranted on YouTube. It was, it was. First of all, you couldn't even monetize the video, so he just went on there because he needed a place to vent. No one right. else. Did that stuff? He was. But he the was first funny, guy. not trying to be funny. He was right. Not but he, right. he wasn't. His but, but personality. He, Nobody understands. If he could have monetized those videos, he probably would have made a fortune back then. Oh yeah. He, could you? He, could you imagine now if he had if he had lived, how rich he would be right now? Oh my he god. He probably would have got it. thrown off. He couldn't control himself. Yeah, oh, he probably no, would have got thrown off. You're right. You're right. He would have got. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that personality, <laughs> yeah, right? You know. True. I, I take that back. Forget about. it. He, could, he would talk to me about the Yankees. He'd be like, that motherfucker, did you see it? He gave him five <laughs> runs, five fucking runs. He would freak out. You know, he was a big Yankee fan. Didn't they bury him in his Yankee shit and all that stuff? I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he was he, him and I, forget about it, together with the Yankees. He'd call me up, he'd tell me, oh, the fucking Yankees last night, oh my God, Derek G to four strikeouts. He believed that he got fucking, he sucked. And the next day, you know, he'd be like, I oh, dude, you see Gina hit that fucking, you know, game-winning run? Ah, fuck, I love him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Derek and I used to go out on, when I, I got divorced in, what was it, 2001, so... It was like a two-year stretch where Derek and I, and there was another guy, we would go out to like clubs on the weekends. like Because I never had done that. But I, I went through like a little phase where we were going out. And um, you, you were still doing it when I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, that was, the, there was, that, was that like, you know, two, three-year time period. And but we would go out every weekend. We would go to the local places. Like there was like a, club, a couple clubs. That was the techno was big back then. Mm -hmm. And people were dropping, you know, ecstasy and stuff like that. So Derek, one night, we're driving. And he's like, I'm going to do some ecstasy tonight. I said, all right. So he takes some. And then, um, you know, we went out like the whole night and then everything closed down and we're driving home at like four in the morning. I'm like, Derek, let me just tell you one thing. You better take a Xanax before you go to sleep. I said, are you not going to be able to sleep? He goes, bro. He goes, I, he goes, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'll be out in three seconds. I said, I'm telling you, you're going to be staring <laughs> at the ceiling all night long and you're going to be pissed off the next day that you didn't take that Xanax. I said, take a Xanax before you go to sleep. So the next day, you know, I don't hear from him, whatever. You know, later in the day, I call him up. I'm like, what's going on? He goes, you, you fucking bastard. I said, what? He goes, you, you jinxed me. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I was up the whole night. I said, I said, why were you up the whole night? Did you take the Xanax? He goes, no, I didn't need the Xanax. 
I, it was you. And I was thinking about the fact that you said I should have taken it. I couldn't stop staring at the ceiling because you told me that was going to happen. I said, Eric, I said, it happened because you were on stimulants, I said. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny? Somebody took a picture of me and Derek. We were, I forgot where we were, me and him. We were together and and we were doing this shit, like, you know, like get it to the yeah. camera. And then guys like fucking uh, took dildos and they put it in our hands. Oh, no. Like, like we were, and then they put that all over fucking <laughs> get big, man. <laughs> and he went nuts. Uh, yeah. Went nuts. Another nuts. great Derek story is we were at this club called Mirage. And uh, oh, this, is, Mirage. this is when guys were like uh, accusing him of being gay. So we used to break his balls about it, you know. And so he he's like, all right. So we used to back then there was no dig, there was no phone cameras. So you used to bring these the throwaway. Remember the throwaway cameras? Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah. So yeah. you take pictures and you whatever. There was twenty four pictures and there. You have to take them and get them developed. So we would bring the little throwaway cameras with us to the uh, to the clubs and we would take pictures with them. And he comes running over to me. He goes, "Fucking get that camera and come over to me with the bar." I said, "What are you doing?" He goes. Wait till you see this. So he comes over to the bar with I go over to the bar with him, and there's a really attractive woman sitting there, like really, really hot girl. Outfit, boobs out to here. He's like, All right, I want you to take a picture of me with her. Wait, was she a girl? A real girl? A really so he kisses the he all of a sudden goes over, he starts like like making out. He's like, take take the picture. I take the picture, and uh then he goes, Thanks a lot, and he walks away from her. I'm like, What are you doing? What what just happened? He goes, you got the picture? I said, yeah. He goes, you developed that picture. I want that picture. Fuck these guys online. I said, Derek, you just made out with the hottest girl in the club. How can you, you leave walking away from her? He goes, he goes, I, I just, I just needed the picture. Dave, you mean a camera like this? Yeah. Oh my God. You have one? Look, remember what they still mean? make those? <laughs> <laughs> they had a little box camera. Hey, Greg, is that empty or is there pictures? That no, there's still pictures out there. You should get the belt from, from, from 2000 in there, probably, 20 years ago. Dude, let me, let me tell you something. Remember when he was marrying that really hot girl? He sent me all this shit and pictures of him and oh, her together. That he was told a me disaster. to put it yeah. in the magazine and all this shit. So I did. I put it in the magazine. That and was then he a goes, disaster. Goes, the, the ring. It was the ring. Yeah, it was the ring. ring. The oh, ring. The ring. And he calls me up and he goes to me, bro. Forget that picture. Get it out of there. We got. We're, we're not getting married no more. I'm like, it's too late. It's already. I already handed it in. So it was in the magazine. <laughs> him with that ring book scandal too. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember well, all that. He stole the. He wouldn't give, give. She wouldn't give him the ring back. Right. But she was hot, bro. Not for nothing. She was hot. I, we had to get Rick Collins involved. Remember? I think he was paying her or something like that to like marry. No, nah, she like was hot. He was all in love with her. He's like, bro, this is the one. I met the one. But she was like from like Nashville or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, she was from like but fucking. Why did they break up? I don't remember. I forgot. I forgot. But you're right. The ring. She wouldn't give him the ring back. He was he was freaking out. I had put it. He, he begged me, please put it. So I put the thing in there and he wrote uh, like his whole profession of love for this girl and how she's the greatest thing. And, I, uh, and then I he, asked he me, knew he was crazy. That's why. Yeah. You know. but then he yeah. Me, take it out. Please take it. I told him I can't. <laughs> it's already at the printer. I, I handed it in already. He 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 really really wanted a good relationship and to get married yeah. and you know he he wanted that so bad you know well, you know you know who his girl was my girl Rosetta Rosetta, Rosetta. 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 that's my girl yeah. man I love her she's very good friends with me and my girlfriend you know her and Alessandro Sabi we all love yeah we all love Rosetta but I, yeah, he Rosetta probably drove great. her he probably drove her crazy too I'm sure oh but. yeah 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 she was she was devastated over. Her. When he passed away, boy, she was really yeah. Good. yeah. Well, they were. Close. She's a good even, girl. Even, though, that's, the, even though they weren't dating, they were still close. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. She she's a good dude. She was really close with Bob Bonham too. You know. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh know yeah, that. yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. She was very good close. Girl. With Bob. Her and Bob were really good, good friends. Yeah. Very close. All right. I I wanted to ask you guys a question because um, I was talking the other day with uh, some of my friends about some of the the craziest places I've trained and. How bodybuilders for some reason love to train like like really late at night. I know Greg still you still trains late at I night. I do. I trained last night till two two fifteen in the morning. He, Greg called me up when I was in the hospital, like, and he's like, "You want to see how I was doing?" He's like, uh, "I'm just checking." It was eight eight in the morning. He's like, "I'm just checking on you. I wanted to see how you're doing." I said, oh, "Greg, that's really nice." He goes, "Yeah, I haven't slept yet. I gotta go. I gotta <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go to sleep." I'm like, "You haven't slept? It's eight in the morning. <laughs> what the hell were you doing all night? I'm not at eight. I can't what do you do? I'm lit. 
Well, no, me and my girlfriend were probably out doing shit, like junking and shit. Like she does, she junking at, at, at like what four in the morning? Yeah, Five we in get. The yeah, well, because people throw shit out. Look, we got like, uh, shit. See, like <laughs> the early yeah, bird gets the worm. See, like a statue and shit. Very cool. See, we, I, I, I rebuild that same these one. things. We rebuild them and sell them. See, see. Wow. Very, a lot of money. very uh, creative. You guys are very creative because. Uh, dude, I got a whole. Dude, I, I create those statues. Dude, look, I got my whole art kit right here. See? Do you I paint them or does she paint them? Nothing. You paint them or she paints them? No, I do all that. Like, I don't just repaint them. I fix them. I'll make, I'll make this fucking thing. I'll make one of these. Really? Yeah, I got the clay. I do all that shit. I, I make the mold. I, I didn't know you were that. I didn't make the lawn jockey then. <laughs> and today, though, you get in trouble with that long <laughs> jockey. It's all I need, fungal. I see ones that are white now, you know, the long you, jockey. You know, I don't even know where that came from, but all of a sudden, you look any neighborhood on Long Island, you drive around, you see these right. with the red jacket, right? And the, the red jacket and the white pants and the black face all over the place. And the gnomes. Hat. Don't the they little have the gnomes hat. too? Th them too, yeah, but they came the later. Gnomes. They came later. Oh. The, the lawn jockey was. By the mailbox or what? It, right? And yeah. Strangest fucking thing. He holding the light like this. Yeah, oh, Dave, Dave, Dave Smith, Smith wants you, wants you to make him. Yep. Greg, Dave Smith wants you to make him a statue of Sammy Davis Jr. Can you do it? <laughs> Dave, <laughs> tap, I dance, tap dancing. <laughs> I could do it if I had to. You should do it. I think I you should take. I think you should take requests, Greg, and maybe Look, you I can make some real money. Right here. I, we do all this. People think I got. You should do Ronnie me. Coleman. Why don't you make a Ronnie Coleman statue? I should, right? I should make a. I should Ronnie make a would giant probably pay one. you for it. I guarantee you'd give me your money for it if it came out good. Oh, I could make it look real. Believe do me. Do it. I'd like to you just see Ronnie it just for just the hell of it. I do. We do all that shit over here, man. I fucking. You have no idea. I want to see you take a piece of clay and mold it into Ronnie Coleman and paint it and everything like that and display it on the show. How about that? Can you do I, that? For I got to do it for real, though. Like I, I would do a, like a big. Well, one. I don't want you to do it for fake. I want you to do it for real. Yeah. I no, I meant like a statue. big. For life size. He means life size. Oh, you know, clay. Life size. You can put it on your front lawn right there. <laughs> like a like statue of Davies, like a level away. Burglars. A jacked like lawn jockey, John. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you yeah. see Ronnie's finally moving out and he put his house up for sale? I saw that. Why is it? Yeah, Ronnie said he needs a bigger house now because his kids are getting bigger. Yeah, so I've been to his house before and trained right. over there. Um, the part of Arlington that's in, it's kind of getting a little run down. So uh, it's time for him to move. I don't know why he didn't move a long time. And he goes, because that part of Arlington, it's, it's not bad. It's not far from the Metroplex at all. It's just, that's what you know, it's not like it was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Like, that part of Arlington used to be really nice, and so it's right. a little run down now. So I think he likes to be close to the gym is what he likes, right? Dave, did well, you ever his, his mom, like, the, the, went before his mom passed, um, he Even liked around being the there. Right and, up the street. Yeah. She and cooked then, all his she cooked all his meals. Yeah. And then, exactly. you know, that home gym he had, and, you know, it's right. he's selling it with the gym in there. So it's, it's selling for, like, almost half a million. So... I have to imagine that, you know, he's been there for, like, what, almost 30 years, right? Dude, did yeah. you ever hear the story of Sean Ray when Sean Ray went to his house? He, no. he, he, he Yeah, he went to his house to, like, I forgot why the fuck he went there. And he was, he, and it was all these, like, gangbangers sitting in his house. And he's sitting there, and he's like, and, and uh, he calls up Ronnie. And Ron, and he goes, Ronnie, there's all these, like, fucking guys in this house. What are, what's going on over here? And Ronnie goes, what's their names? And he goes to the one guy, dude, what's your name? You know, and the guy said his name, and Ronnie go, and he tells Ronnie his name is whatever, you know, because he thought they were breaking in the house. They were all like, he he said they were all like hood rats and shit. And then uh, <laughs> Ronnie goes, oh yeah yeah yeah, they're all right. Let them sit there, fine. Let just let them stay there. And, and uh, then uh, the one dude turns and looks, goes, wait, dude, you're Sean Ray, aren't you? And Sean Ray's like. Uh, yeah, and he was like freaking out because he's like, these guys look like they're gonna rob the house, you know. Was, <laughs> but then Ronnie knew it. He's like, yeah, yeah, let him stay, just let him hang out. You know? But but a lawn jockey's bad. <laughs> <laughs> the lawn jockey. I I think that right. You know what happens after a while is you know you. you Ronnie was convinced he was gonna live in that house the rest of his life because he even said it in the little post he put up there. But you know what happens? You know the wife wants a bigger house. He's got a lot. He's got a lot of kids, Ronnie. And as the kids get bigger, you know they need more. They want more room. They want to 
separate corner house. You know, Ronnie obviously makes decent money. He can afford to get a, a more expensive house. So I guess he figures that, ah, you know, he'll he'll uh, he'll move on up to a bigger place. But, uh, you know, I'm sure if it was left to Ronnie, he would just stay in that house. I yeah. know it. But he it's all in your comfort zone. That's what it is. He's comfortable there. That's, it, that's but his but you know what? This is a very important lesson for you, Greg. If Ronnie Coleman can move out of the house he's been in for 27 years, you could leave your house that you've been in for your whole life, basically. Well, I didn't live here. To, you know, I I got the house back, but I didn't live right. here for a long time. The, the was, otherwise I mean, absent Jimmy the Bull could also take yeah, a, yeah, you know, take a page out of that playbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Exactly. Anyway, my original question was, I want to go around the horn and ask you guys, number one, the craziest time you've ever trained, like, you know, how late at night or in the morning, whatever. And the craziest gym you trained at that you can remember that you could you know bring back to your memory like what was the craziest experience you had training at, and what time? Let's start with uh, Larry. Well, the best gym I ever trained, actually atmosphere wise, was World Gym in Santa Monica back in the eighties when all the pros were going there. We had Lee Haney, Bertel Fox, uh, Samir, hmm. everybody. You you go in the gym and and there'd be thirty pros training at one time. Wow! Yeah. So and there was nobody else there but bodybuilders training. So what time was that? Did you go in at around? Oh, it's usually in the morning time. But I used to go with Menser, and uh, sometimes we'd go to this Nautilus Plus. It was a, I think it was a twenty four hour real late one, and we go late at night in there. Um, bodybuilders love to train late, and I and I am I and I'm I attribute that because I think. You know, you feel good after you've had like five or six meals in you. That's you're exactly up. why I do it. Right? Exactly. That's why I do a whole it. day's yeah. worth of food. A yeah. whole day's worth of food. You're wide awake because you've been up all day. Like a whole that's that's exactly why I do it. Exactly. Yeah. I can't train in the morning. No way. I always get good sessions at night, but um then I can't sleep afterwards. Yeah, you're just too jacked up. Yeah, for no, you go jacked up from the, the training. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean yeah. What was your best place you trained at? Uh, Ironworks Gym. When I was in high school, um, as a as a junior and senior, uh, when I competed, I would go. They gave me the keys to the gym so I could get there before school started. Wow, and, um, <clears throat> that's would, dedication. Yeah, I would train. I had all my food packed. I would eat my food. So I would sit in the back of class so I could eat my food in class because you know food smells and stuff. Um, but yeah, I won, so <laughs> it was it was worth it. I always felt the training oh, yeah. in the morning because when, especially when you're in school, uh, you got to get it out of the way because the things come up and then you just you know you you're, you're gonna if if you want to prioritize your win, do it first thing in the morning. Then you eat all day to recover. So yeah. I always felt if I had any energy left in the evening, I would do cardio. <clears throat> John. <clears throat> Um, the coolest place, most interesting place I ever trained was this place in uh, Havana, Cuba. I was there oh, with my wow. buddy Scott, and we we were at looking for this gym. We were like asking all these people, you know, where where the gym is, and we're getting these, you know, you got to walk down this alley, and then the alley there's a building that fell down, and there's some rubble path we got to pick through, and that path through the rubble leads to like this bombed out open window and you, and you got to submit all cement and you got to crawl through this big open window. And when you get down, you're like in the gym and the weights are like, like a broomstick with a paint can on either side. <laughs> you know, and the, none of the plates match, none of the dumbbells match, the, um, you know, it was just pieces of the most like ingenious mechanical pulley systems, you know, fought up with, junk that they found you know it was incredible and then and there's these like these jack dudes walking around in there so that, that was that was kind of interesting there was no roof it was open air no no roof everything was rusty so you got filthy right. dirty that's right. right remember that when i first said hardcore is dirty when i put that in my yeah. sig that's yeah. where that comes from uh, okay. you're training at gym and you're fucking filthy when that's you, like when metro fact that metro it was like and and back after and then i went to subsequently to Metroflex, same fucking thing happened. You get filthy trained in there. Yeah, so get a tennis <clears throat> hardcore is dirty. And yeah. anyway, 
that's where that came from. The late late night stuff when, when I had my gym in Guadalajara, I had a condo above the gym, so I had oh, twenty four right. hour access. Yeah. So a couple times I had a, this guy I used to train with every now and then would come in from Mexico City. We would train, we'd close the gym at eleven, and then, you know we'd leave the lights on, and he and I would train like like till one in the morning. With I with, love that. Uh, yeah, we're all by ourselves. The music cranking and with the pool going downstairs too. That was that like. Best lap of luxury so yeah that, that was the best one. yeah great workout at late at night most people love the late night workouts mr g what about you uh jack delane to bet when they were turning into bally's i had the key <laughs> right around the corner from my house we would train we would train like uh from like 12 to like two in the morning we did that me and my and brother to, and then you'd go to the diner afterwards right and have a fucking huge meal too right yeah that's what we used to do that's when we started the one-on-one -on -one program there. I remember, and then then they, my friend was the vice president uh, there, and then they switched the they switched the vice president. We got this new guy came in, and then one day we're there we're, we're there um, in the middle of the night, and the, the new the new people walk in, and they're like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> like, what do you mean what I'm doing? Because I had all my friends and everybody there was training. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! That's yeah, funny. then they wanted to try, then they wanted to get rid of us. You know, because we started the one on one program and Jack Blaine, but they couldn't, no one wanted to tell us that we were fired. No, they were afraid of you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Greg, what about you? Oh, God. Well, there's four gyms, Dave, if you want to get technical. All right. All right. First of all, the White Plains YMCA, Animal House, absolute fucking Animal House. Almost like the place John talked about in Havana. They had no air conditioning, <laughs> no fucking at the dead. A little wind that would lead upstairs. You know, the wind, the, the air would come through this like little fucking thing up there. And I'm telling you, it was brutal. If we had Charlie Arms walking around, and there would be fucking fist fights in there and insane shit. And then my gym in, in uh, Peak Skill Fitness Center. And I had three gyms in my lifetime, but the very first one, that's where Lee Haney, Laura Cravel, Ron Love, Jackie mm -hmm. Pazel, Vince Taylor, Lee Labrada, all of them were there. Dean Caputo, uh, you know, John Defendis. We had all those guys coming in and out of there. And it was a madhouse. And it was like shootouts in front of my gym. There was a whore murdered in our parking lot. It was in, <laughs> it was in Peak Skill, New York, and it was very bad. And then you have... Uh, uh, World Gym was good, like Larry said, but the thing I, I loved World Gym better because they didn't play music. All right, yeah. I like that, but it wasn't an animal house. What was an animal house was fucking Gold's Gym in Venice, which was insane too. You know what I mean? That's where you had maniacs and fucking barbarian brothers puking on the floor and fucking yeah, every you know there was there was insane shit there too. You know, Mike Matarazzo fucking beat up two guys in a in an alleyway. When I was there, the cops came in looking for him. He beat up two fucking guys and left them in a fucking one in a dumpster and one on a fucking laying on the ground uh, in a in you know the alley along for, along Gold's gym in there, yeah. and uh, this was like uh, that was much later. That was maybe ninety one, ninety two, but um, but that place was an animal house too. But my gym and 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 fucking. You you know already you already know a lot of guys that trained at the White Plains YMCA. I mean, it was a madhouse there. It was, you know, and the same thing like John said. The bars were fucking bent and shit. You know what I mean? You know, it it was bad. And it, it, the sweat, everything was rusted from people dripping sweat. You know, what I mean? and the breath, the breath never left the fucking room. You walk in there, it's like whoa, holy fucking high karate breath in here because that shit's kicking. You know what I mean? So they care. They went there. It was the only game in town. That's why. Oh right? yeah, it's because you're talking about. Uh, listen, guys, you you know I'm talking. That was like 1975, 1976, 1976. There were no gyms. Yeah, there was no gyms around. So I used to go there. Mike Torsha. You know, we were all. You know, wow. it was a fucking madhouse there, though. Madhouse. That's big power cool. lifters. That's... Everybody was there. Bill Terry. All those guys used to train it every fucking day. It was a madhouse. That's why we got it. You know, me and my boy Vinny Altero. Hey, Vinny, uh, what's going on? And uh, we always talk about this. You got to get Charlie Arms on one time because he's yeah. he can tell you stories. Forget yeah. about I, it. I just I, I just talked to him the other day. Did you uh, did you know Bill Day? Yeah, did I know Bill Day? Uh, for, dude, Bill Day and I. Yeah, fuck yeah. I used to buy equipment with him, dude. He's the squat with six hundred pounds on his back and t put his hands on his legs like this and just squat, no, not never holding the bar. He would have full conversations with himself. 
Billy, 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 let's go over here. Let's try maybe some V-Bar present. And you're looking around and you're like, who the fuck is he talking to? And it'd be, he's had full conversations with himself. Squat, squat, never holding the bar. Never holding the bar like this. Like, that's what I heard, yeah. You know about that. I know that's why. I heard him. someone tell me that. Well, you know, but he had that gym up in, um, in Port, Port Chester. Port, Port, Port Chester, right. Port Chester. And um, I, used I used to go, to go there. and be, hang out with him. Yeah, I, I used to go there at like two in the morning and hang out with them there. Dude, he'd go to the back room. He had stacks of mirrors. I'm like, what do you do with all the mirrors? He goes, you know, I think I'm going to sell them. You know, he was a very good dude. Yeah, he would stockpile shit. He had all kinds of crazy dude, stuff in the Dude, I used to buy gym. some of this shit from because I'd be like, give me that fucking Norris machine. He had like kids' toys in there and stuff like that. He would buy anything. He had like, it was like a flea market in there, right? Yeah, but you know what, Dave? These guys today, they don't notice. Those guys had personality. It's a... Oh, yeah. Bill Day was a very good bodybuilder, you guys. I didn't know that. I didn't know that about him. I only knew him as a gym owner. Yeah. Yeah, no, because you, you knew him later on. He was a yeah. 70s bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Uh, and he yeah, was I knew a very, him very good bodybuilder. Yeah. And he'd always like, he'd say something and he'd like sniff it. He'd go, you know, I'm going to tell you something, Dave. You know, <laughs> he, he, you know what I'm saying? You ever notice guys that they, they breathe? Donald Trump does that a little bit sometimes. You hear Donald Trump say, and you know, Joe Biden. You know, they'll, you know, they do that <laughs> after they talk. <laughs> Bill a little Dave, low in Bill oxygen. Yeah. Imagine yeah. squatting 600 fucking pounds. Yeah, that's crazy. With your hands on your legs like this, and you would <laughs> you'd go all the way up, all the way down, never touching the bar. And the bar that's never crazy. came off him. Greg, that's did you crazy. ever see Steve, Charlie Aarons and Steve Marjanian training together? I've seen Marjanian, yeah. You ever see the two of them training together? No, I don't remember. It was so long ago. I don't remember who Marjanian trained with. They, they trained it well for a while. They trained together. They were like in, in, in insane. The two made the barbarian brothers look like little boys. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, did you ever hear the stories about them? Some of the notorious uh, things. Yeah, Mar Marjanian was a madman. I I know that. You know, uh, there's a picture of him on a cover of a bodybuilding magazine, standing like this, and there's a girl standing. Oh yeah, yeah, on, on his standing arm. on his arm. Yeah. Stand, she's, it's not a, it's not a. She's legit standing on his arm. You know, like that. Yeah, I, I remember that. Holy shit, I do remember that, dude. You know who else was crazy? Dean Tornabine. So I he, trained with him for two years. He crippled me. I have dude, still Dean a Tornabine. back pain because of him. He was like five <laughs> three. He'd walk around and fucking with us, bro. He'd be like, he was fucking great. I still, I'd sit there. I'd go to World's Gym in the morning, and then I'd go to Gold's Gym later on. And the same, some of the same guys, like Samir and all those guys, you know, uh, Lou Ferrigno. Dude, the craziest transformation I ever saw was in Lou Ferrigno. I think it was eighty two or eighty three when he did that Sinbad yeah. movie. When did he do that Sinbad movie? I forgot when it was, but he. Look at his shorts. <laughs> I, wait, listen. I saw I saw Ferrigno. Yes or like no? Eight, it was like either April of eighty two or eighty three when I left there, and then uh, I saw him at the night of Champions, which was June. When I left there, he looked like he was a fucking two ten. When it, when I saw him at night of Champions, he was like three hundred fucking pounds, shredded, built. Remember when he? Remember when he took off his shirt? He was doing the movie Sinbad, and he got up there at the night of the champions. They asked him to make a speech, and he ripped his shirt off, and he was doing the double bicep, and the crowd was going crazy. That's because he, he trained to do Sinbad. I saw him three, four months before that, and he had no build at all. looked like a basketball player. Wow. And then when I see him at the night, I was like, what the fuck? He put on like 75 pounds of muscle. He was a hyper responder, yeah. Oh Absolutely. my god, I never saw it. that's the most amazing transformation. You're talking about three months, three, four months, maybe the most. It was April, I think, when I left there. I don't remember it was 82 or 82. I can't, I can't even fucking remember. But and then it was that it was that June, that night of champion. So how many months is that? And he, he was like a bean pole in the gym. I was I was right next to him on a fucking lap machine. You know, back then he didn't know, you know, I wasn't I was just a you know, you know, young guy. But I mean I he was fucking like skinny as a rail. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, holy fuck. I, I could not believe when he got up there on stage at the Night of Champions. And everybody kept chanting, take it off. Take it. And he ripped his fucking shirt off. And he did a double bicep. And Wayne D'Amelio almost fainted. It was great. <laughs> he, he's, he's gone up and down like that a couple of times. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'd see him in the yeah. gym. He'd be like, look at Lou Ferrigno. What's he playing? Basketball? Like, what is that shit? You know, and then, and then all of it, and then all of a sudden, you'll gain seventy pounds. You know. Oh my God! Yeah. That, that was the when, when, when he came back. I was yeah. ninety four for the yeah. for the first. Yeah. The first, dude, 
that was the most impressive sight ever in the history of the sport when he yeah. walked on stage at 318 pounds. Now, wait so a minute. L let me ask you a question, John. Was that – I forgot. When he competed, did he had, – had, I knew he had the, got the calf implants. Did they make him take it out before that show or after that show? Do you remember? I don't remember that at all. No. Yeah, he had to have them – he took them out because for competing. Fuck, I don't remember what uh, – Dave, you don't remember that? They, I thought no one said anything about it. I thought they just kind of brushed it under the carpet. Yeah, that's what I thought. They no, just but he had that, I thought he had them taken out after that or before that. I can't remember if it was before or after that. I don't know. It's an interesting question. I never asked him. Yeah. He I, don't think, well, I don't think he ever had him taken out, Greg, to be honest Really? With you. So it's still there? I think, I mean, I don't know if he still has them to this day, but I mean, you know. Who did his calf implants? Did anyone? Else? I don't know. I hope it wasn't Nadler. My my friend got him from Nadler, and they dropped down to his ankles. He could move his calf up and down like this. <laughs> that picture right oh, there. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yep. That was a sick picture. Yeah, that was fucking nuts, man. Dude, I was rooting for him back then. How, what is he? Six two? How tall is Louis? No, he's yeah, like six, six five. Six five. Yeah, I mean he's a, he, I mean to be that tall and that dense is so rare, man. He's and like and he was like forty years old. He looks like he's thirty here. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's what forty one or forty two there. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. How yeah, it's probably looks. the best he ever looked. It was. Yep. It, yeah, was. it was. It was good. And they, had, was a, they, had, a, they had to go to the fucking mountaintop in Switzerland and go find go find Robbie Robinson to come down and beat him. You know, it was, like, <laughs> it was such a conspiracy. You know, How did Robbie, Robbie beat him? Were, I, did Robbie John, beat I think him they were anyway. mad because Lou went to the WBF originally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it was kind of sad because Louis was finally going to get his his turn, you know, even, right. even though it was masters, you know, you went through the whole thing with Arnold, you right. know, yes. and the whole thing. And it was like, yeah, finally, Louis going to get his Olympia, you know? And it was like, that, that, that was me, a really nice thing. And then they yeah. fucking, they literally had to send chief inspector Clouseau out to find freaking Robbie Robinson. He was literally, and Robbie didn't even deserve Robbie. to beat him. I don't think Robbie looked better than him. No, no way. but they no but they, way. But they, had a, they, they carried him down from a freaking mountaintop. <laughs> no, no way. He had no intention of competing ever. It was like right. they had to like drag him in and so that they could take it away from Louie. That was so yeah. you know what it is though. Yeah. Robbie looked the same in the gym in the off season that he did on stage. He never changed. That's the yeah. whole thing with Robbie. Yeah. He was known for that, bro. He yeah. was so fucking weird. I would go work out, and you know me, I fucking train for like three hours. I come back upstairs, he's still sitting, you know, in the fucking locker room in his underwears and shit. He was fucking wacky. He was really getting wacky. ready, mentally preparing for his workout. That's why. All right, Dude, let me Tyler go to Armand. Told me to All right, hold on, shut up, Greg, for a second. Let oh. me go to Armand. Armand, your uh, your experience with the hardcore gym. What time do you train? Um, you know, of course, I started at Metroflex and Gold Arlington. Um. So I remember like when I first started, I liked the late time too. you know, me and my girlfriend at the time, I think I was like 16, 17. That's when I really put on my, a lot of size, you know, like a growth spurt to become like a man. And so I was probably training like 2 a.m. there. And then um, Ronnie re retired, but I trained with Ronnie for about three months, uh, 2014 or 2015, because I was prepping his athlete Corey Matthews at the time. So we all trained together for about three months. And I didn't like training with the moves too late. And I was living at Dallas. So it was about a 45 minute drive. At? What time What's did Ronnie that? work at? What time did Ronnie work at it? Two, two was about, he always worked out late too, usually. But at that, time he, at that time he was training about, we were doing like two or three in the morning, one, two in the morning. The gym was he already still up from the whole day? Um, he I think he was up. For, yeah, he went. He woke up late, so he was up from the whole day. Oh, okay. He wasn't training hard then, so I could actually keep up. He was, you know, it's like 2014 after he retired. So, yeah. yeah I don't know about you guys. I I used to um go to sleep really late at night, and I would wake up really late. Like I would sleep till noon sometimes, <laughs> and I don't know why my body just performed better when I did that. I don't know why I stayed up so late at night, but I would stay up till like four in the morning and I would sleep till noon. And uh, I always, that was like my whole shtick. And if I went to, I went to the gym late, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, you know, and I got done at midnight, 1, 1230. I would, we would go to the diner after that, you know, we would eat like, uh, you know, I would have like a steak or I'd have like, you know, like burgers and, and fries and or whatever, 
you know, whatever happened to be my crazy meal of the day. And I, I don't know why we got into that routine of just doing that for a long time. I just felt really strong when I would train with like, you know, like Greg said, like five or six meals in me. Now, I also yeah. did train in the middle of the day also for, you know, I, I had different periods that I went through with my bodybuilding career, but I really loved training late night. And like I was telling Greg, Bill Day's gym in um, Port Chester, Port Chester. New York. Um, I used to meet my my crazy doctor friend, Dr. Mike there. He would get there at like, you know, 1230 at night. And some, and I'd go in there and I'd train a few body parts with him. He would train for three hours. And then we would just talk about steroids and, and, and you know, bodybuilding and all the different, you know, pharmaceuticals and, and, you know, all the different ideas we had about, you know, combining different things together. And that to me was the most fun I had. But probably the most hardcore place I ever trained was when I was in jail. And they had this outdoor place with like a canopy over it. And so, you know, if it was the middle of the summer, you'd sweat your ass off, right? Because it was like really hot. And then in the middle of the winter, you'd, you'd have to put like winter coats on. I'll never forget. It was like probably like March or the end of February. And we were training. I had a winter coat on, gloves on, and we were squatting. And I had 400, 405 on the bar. There was no mirrors either. So you, you got the bar, you step back, and you look straight ahead. And it was like... It was basically like a wildlife refuge where this prison, this federal prison was, and you would just see snow. It was snowing, like like torrential snow. But we were we had a canopy over us, but it was blowing. And so the <laughs> snow was hitting me in the face, and I was squatting, you know, 405 for about 10 reps. And I said, guys, don't forget this day. Don't get much better than this. I said, this is <laughs> yeah. And so I'll never forget, as long as I live, I'll never forget that day squatting in the snow like that. It was fucking <laughs> awesome. Sir. You're lucky. We didn't have no weights, man. God, in man, prison, I used to stuff. we used to train in the rainstorms, everything. Right yeah. in the middle of the thunder, thunderstorms, outdoors. Oh, no, great. There was no canopy, nothing. Oh, really? Oh, that's even crazier. Yeah, yeah, we just put on jackets and a beanie and go out there and train in like in the middle yeah. of the storm. Yeah. And we had a, I don't know about you, we had to wear they always made you wear your work boots into the into yeah. the uh, weight pit. You couldn't wear sneakers. So it's like you're stomping around in these big work boots. And usually if it was cold, you had a big winter jacket on. If, if not, you know, <laughs> you had your sweatpants and your, and your white T-shirt on. And it was, you know, like I said, I, I wouldn't want to – luckily I only was there five months, but it was, it, was, it was definitely memorable. It was hard. Couldn't get any more hardcore than that. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, good show. Uh, I'm glad we got to, to talk about Derek Anthony a little bit. I know a lot of guys don't really know who he is, but uh, hopefully you guys got a taste of Derek, and uh, I do miss him. I know, John, you miss him too. And we, uh, Greg, we too. all, yeah. uh, you know, we all had a special connection. And uh, Mr. G, you know, uh, Derek used to hang out with us all the time back in the day, and uh, he left us way too soon, mm -hmm. of course. And, uh, you know, he's missed. And I can't believe how long is it? How long has he been gone now, guys? Oh, God. It's like ten years, more than ten years. Is it ten years, or I think it's ten oh, years. Well, it's it was years. more, more because it was Derek was the Boston, the original Boston Lloyd, but an angry Boston Lloyd. Boston Lloyd was, was never like you know, yeah, nonviolent, nonviolent. Yeah, Boston, <laughs> right? The rich piano yeah. and the rich piano with the tattoos and everything. Yeah, if anything, Rich probably copied Derek because Derek had the tattoos way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, we, too bad, do we have any of those the neck bulging rants on film that we? I well, I have. You know what? I've shown before, and I'll probably I'll pull it up if you want. You remember when you and him almost got into a fight on the on the show? Oh, you always got. I was going to dive over to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, John and, and Derek were like this close to like you know killing each other, basically on the TV show live. We were filming. You know? So I'll pull that footage up. He, he, uh, that remember we true. did it? I think we did the hundredth anniversary show. I don't think he. I think he was still around for that, right? He didn't like the fact that we we showed that, right? Did he get upset or something like that by it? Yeah, I don't. You, he got upset because he, you know, because he didn't want. You know, people think of us that way because we were we were really good friends by then. Oh no, you know? yeah, you guys were, but it, but it was very funny when you guys got into that that argument. Though I was, oh, that was so, I you know what I, I was screaming at him. You I was screaming. so pissed at him. There's a handful of times I can remember in my life being that fucking mad. <laughs> I was so pissed off at him. Remember, because we gave him fucking every and and he was like was like what a fucking prima donna and yeah. I, I was I just was I flipped out and that was. Yeah, man, I, I was I still to this day can look back on that as being one of the most angry times I, I, I've ever been. Well, that was when the hundred shows when I got made at Vinny the Chin. 
<laughs> oh yeah, you're right. You got you almost oh. him in that show too. Well, right? That's that's right. Right. Jimmy was in between me. I was going. He said something about my kid. <clears throat> oh my god, that's right. He said something about my kid. Remember? <laughs> who is this guy, Vinny the Chin? Who who is oh, he? He, he? He's he's like the you remember uh, um, Saturday Night um, Live? No, Live, right? Saturday Night Live, and they used to have Father Father Ducci. The Italian guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he used to have like so. Vinny had that Italian act, like he was like a, a oh, I remember like a Guido. So Yo, I'm a Guido. Yeah, I I lift weights, I shoot steroids in my arms. Yeah, girls love me. Yeah, yeah. Is he Wait. is he like that for real? Or is that that was an act, right? Well, he was. He was doing that. Then he said something about my son. Yeah, yeah. I tried to. You know, my yeah. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I think I found the, 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 the rant. Hold on. No Hold on. way. Yeah, I think I found it. Hold on. <laughs> this is, is going to be good. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, this is, you guys are going to like this. You'll enjoy it. Hold on. Let me pull it up. <laughs> then we ended up loving each other. It's really funny. Yeah. Johnny Mahalo. You better come down. I'm Keep coming. Holy you better come down. I'm you coming. Me? I'm sending him down there. Tell him to answer his ticket. phone. All right, here we go. Yeah, right. All right, Johnny, take it easy. That was John Rage and Romano. Now we're going to go to the clip in a second. As soon as Johnny has that thing keyed up, Derek Anthony, John Romano, myself, uh, Jeff, the producer. You, you threatened to shoot him in the foot. You were going to shoot him in there, but uh, uh, we don't have much time to go through this. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll bring up the whole stories, but, you know. Uh, you did shoot you did threaten you did, to shoot him in the foot, him. right? And I wonder why. When you <laughs> talk about the whole story, that'll take an hour. No, the story was that, that, that his computer crashed or whatever happened, and he couldn't play. Oh, oh, really? That's yeah, the real that's story. That's exactly, that's exactly what happened. Why don't you tell the fans the truth? We did. What is the truth? Yeah, that, that is, is the, the truth. truth. Why I got pissed? And no, you didn't no, have no, to no, do no. it with a certain girl? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> first of all, first of all, <laughs> no, no, not with not nothing, nothing to do with it. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing with Jeff. No, no. About the topic, it had nothing to do with that. No, the, no, the show didn't go up because he didn't finish editing. I, mean, I wasn't talking about the show. I was talking about why, why I said that. It happened to it had to go be over a girl. It wasn't because I was pissed off him at first. Over oh, right. the fucking you show. You were shooting the foot because of the girl, and right? First right, of right. all, and you fucking blow every little goddamn thing out of proportion. <laughs> you wouldn't. Be <laughs> no, Hold on. Yeah, what Derek said that was between me and you. How do you know the? Here he goes. The neck is starting like to bulge. Yeah. Message, okay? <laughs> I was joking around. around uh -huh. I should go there and shoot them in the foot. Like, I'm going to fucking do it. First of all, I wouldn't shoot him in the foot. First of all, I have somebody shoot him in the foot. I, I thought it was very, very funny that you said you shoot him in the foot. So, if it's, right, a, so it's a fucking <laughs> joke. That's not a threat. If it was a threat, I'd do it in fucking person. Right, well, I wasn't even talking about that. Worried, <laughs> I should shoot him in the foot. I so I use the excuse that I threaten you, Mike. It's always the mafia reference. I, yeah. I, 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 I wasn't even. Right? So facts are facts. Dave is doing the show. Come on, man. Seriously. Our ex muscle is doing the show based on the money that we bring in and from sponsors. I Dave. Dave pays I don't give bills. a fuck who you report to. So the money comes from sponsors. If, I can, if you're not getting sponsors want, to pay for your show, I, then that means it's being subsidized. If I can change Whoever's subsidizing it doesn't matter who's subsidizing it. The fact so is, what? it's being subsidized. Uh, your uh, show uh, makes uh, no uh, money. Uh, so you've uh, had nine weeks, you brought in zero. Uh, not a fucking dime. I got sponsors. I got sponsors. I got sponsors. Don't get loud you got shit. You got Don't nothing. Get yeah. All right, what? You're the only one that's allowed to get loud. Don't you fucking me. cost us money. You fucking I cost us money. Sponsors. Then I'll fucking pay you. Then fucking pay it. Jeff, I mean, go ahead. Reach in your fucking pocket. Jeff's right over there. Write him a check. How much you want, Jeff? How much you want, Jeff? He's gonna fucking pay you. Let me see what I got. Mr. Fucking guy living in his brother's house with his car for sale. He's gonna fucking pay you. Go ahead. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> well, Jimmy's gonna you want to talk about my financial situation? I'm fucking talking about yours, motherfucker. There he is. That's my bagel tomorrow. Pay him, man. Fucking pay him. Fucking pay him. Don't fucking Don't tell me what to fucking do. Fucking pay him. There he is. Pay the motherfucker. All right. I'll do it on this side. Right? 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 Let, let, let's calm down. Guys, for a second. I want to just make one final statement before we get the call. We're going to go to meditation <laughs> next week. Wouldn't you if, if I could shit, find out a sense way, of entitlement, if I could put together a show that's going to make money and bring sponsorship, and wouldn't you want to be a part of that, Derek? But, but make money. But come on. Face reality. You take 
all of it, and you're gonna give us nickels and dimes. Fucking show! Shut the fuck up! You want to be funny? I don't give a fuck. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. Do you want to handle this? There's the vein. I am talking to you like a man. Being all big. Quit acting like a fucking kid. I'm a kid. How about you like a fucking grandpa thinking you got your through low you, you, your voice over me like you know your shit? I do. Facts, facts, bullshit. Anytime you, you want to tell me how much was heavy muscle radio making in the first fucking ten? You're telling me you get thousands, dollars, and millions, thousands of dollars. It made more than your show. Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you <trolling. laughs> Oh! <laughs> I can't tell John as actually mad there though. It's like oh, he was, he was, he was. It, it's hard to tell if he's actually mad or not. That's typical Derek, though. Holy yeah, that was typical oh, Derek. That That's was so typical, typical, so typical. He was so hard to deal with. Yeah, but you know, he's like, and, and no, the funny wait, you left out the biggest part of this whole thing. Derek is impossible to deal with. Who does Dave team him up with? The second most impossible oh, yeah, person to deal with. Jeff you know? the <laughs> so you got him and Jeff the producer and Derek Anthony together doing a radio show. That, that was like, what was that like? Baking soda and vinegar and, you know, corn. <laughs> oh, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Jimmy, he was working out. Yeah, fucking bike. motivational yeah. fucking a, well, shit. We, I have a great bike. Well, uh, in, Later in the, in the show, I have getting... a great Mr. G motivational. Uh, well, let's speech. watch the clip, man. All right, the clip is the, the pizza eating contest. Let's go to it. <laughs> Remember the pizza eating oh, contest? Oh, oh Furious Pete. When he says go, guys, you're going to start. That's Furious Pete. No one even knew who Furious Pete was. Right. We were the first we person invented, to have we, we made okay. Furious Pete. You, everyone ready? Vinny, you all right? You... Look at his shirt. He's got on Peter. Loosen your belt up. No, no, Vinny balls on me. That's what All right, so he's going to expand out. Is that right? Gene's going to restrict you in any way, Pete? Uh, he's got some room in there. All right. Yeah. Paul, on your mark. Loud. Ready. Set. Go. All right, they're off. Pete has already finished one piece. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> See what this guy like stuff in his shit. John, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. Remember he no, had the pizza, cool. he had the like pizza a... in water, cups of water. Yeah, yeah, he he, he so we could just like, so it was real he soft. Ate a couple, did he eat like two pies or something like that? He ate two pies in like forty five minutes. The yeah. fu the funniest thing we don't have on film is that after he eats two pies in whatever twenty minutes for whatever the record was that he did, yeah. we're all standing. The show's over. We're all standing around talking. He's leaning up against the wall eating a piece of pizza. <laughs> and I go, so hungry, yeah. What are you fucking doing? He goes, Yeah, I want to taste it this time. You know, watch watch this. Hold on. This was another good clip. Hold on. While we got it open here. He always was known for his in his costumes. He loves the, the military regalia, Jimmy, right? Yeah, he's into that. Yeah. Uh, he likes the you know, back in the day he told the stories about how they would find old in the forest. World War II bombs <laughs> and they would ignite right, the forest fires. Right? Well, he used to work like that. He used to he dress up at work as you know, right. security. So he used to pick up bombs, you know, take them home. Exactly. <laughs> so I won I invited him here tonight, obviously, to join us in this hundredth anniversary celebration. Let's bring him in now. Let's see what he's wearing. Hey, Eugene. Oh, look, he's got his uh, Russian military outfit on there. No, Did that's you... a that's a highway police. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Sniping from Russia. Yeah. For me. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> he looks more, way more suspicious. I think, I think, it's, I think it's him. <laughs> he looks way more suspicious over there. This is Russian police patrol. Hands up. Oh, no! Oh, oh, please! Mr. Russian! No! He had an erection. Russian look. Oak, I love you! I gave zero. you your name! <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot I had that hat. I remember <laughs> watching all those. Yeah. The funniest Dave, thing about you, you is wait, Dave, do you have Mr. G chasing the chicken through the warehouse? <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking for that. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my that. god, that is one of the cla most classic ones ever. Dude, Hold Eugene on, you, is funny because when he talks, you, want, you don't know you if he's joking around. You want to see the video clip? Yeah. Oh, please, please, please. I could go for pizza. <laughs> Let's too. bring him on. The one and only, the Strong Island legend, 
Vinny the Chin. I'm back, Vinny. Right, Vinny. I'm here. I'm here. All you haters, come suck my dick. All right, Coca Cola, suck my dick. Cease and desist. Fuck you. All right, come cease and desist this dick. It's, 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 On this episode, I thought there'd be more titties here after 100 fucking episodes. This should fucking should be the heavy sausage party. <laughs> I thought you'd bring the girls. He's so right. I, I thought you had him <laughs> here with all the fucking fitness bitches you had on after all the gears. But I guess not. Well, we're reminiscing. I this. I'm fucking him again. We're reminiscing. Doing? All right, we're cool. We're cool. You guys had it. You did have a little you, Shout out to you. Shout out to you. How's your son doing? He's doing he, my son's doing great. Yeah, he looks up to me. I changed his fucking son's life in fucking <laughs> in one episode more than you did your whole what fucking did you life. Do with his brother, his son? I, I gave him confidence. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I said, stop right. taking the bullshit. He's walking around all fucking like this behind right, his listen, fucking Vinny, pop Vinny, shadow. Vinny. I was like, come on. Vinny! Shut the fuck up now. Huh? Don't talk about my fucking kid. And I'm serious. Don't yeah. fucking. T- oh, come on. Oh, oh, wow. Mr. Don't G. Even the camera got scared. Yeah. I'm, I'm dead serious. There's no bullshit. Back it, back it up for a second. Hold on, here. Let me see. Yeah, let him, let him load for a second. Yeah, just the buffer. You don't have yeah, yeah, back it up. It's, it's bad. We talk about so much. I don't kids. know if I have them or not. They kid. might have them. Do your fucking act. Don't talk about my fucking kid. <laughs> All right, let's let's. I'm talk serious, out Dave. Here. I ain't fucking joking I, I, about. Down, I'm G. fucking. I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> don't talk about my fucking kid. I just want to say. No, you're not saying shit. You did nothing for my kid, so shut the fuck up. Talk about you, fucking Vinny, you fucking guinea shit. Talk about it, but don't talk about my fucking kid. What else? I, I we, 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 we also, the we also have in common that I also, I got Superman on too. Want to know? No, man, still bitches see his own the way I come. I show him I got fucking Superman. I ain't scared of kryptonite. I ain't scared of warts. I ain't scared of fucking hairy beeves. You got Superman. I got Superman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're cool. and but boy, no, wait, hold the fuck up. You still owe me fucking money while I worked at your smoothie shop. I fucking worked at this fucking smoothie shop. I put in work there for a day. This motherfucker didn't pay me. You know what I'm saying? One day he didn't fucking pay me. How come you only I'm one fucking day? fired up now. I got me. I remember. I need that money now. I'm in my fucking grandma's basement waiting for that bitch to croak. <laughs> what, do you spend, fucking, what do you spend your money on, Vinny? Going out, coke, <laughs> drugs. It's, it's what winter. season is this now? This it's is off se- obviously, it's off season. I got the shirt on. I'm trying to cover up right here. It's fucking off season right now. now yeah, so you know same. It's off season. But So what do you do in the off season as, as Vinny the Chin? Do you still go out? I, I, I call all the new bitches I met over the summertime, and I fucking run them through the fucking mill. Recycle. recycle. I got you. You okay. know what I'm saying? Now. Vinny, you had it. We saw you a little earlier in one of the skits where you were uh, answering questions and you Absolutely. showed us how to pick up Nicole Ball. Ab- I, yeah, you me- literally picked her up. By the way, speak about Nicole Ball. Shout out, honey. All right. There's a little backstory you guys don't know. I'll be revealing on True Chin Stories on my YouTube channel. What is your YouTube channel? Vinny the Chin, motherfucker. It's Look- how- uh, George George almost George 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 I walked. That's why I walked off. I was gonna. I know him. you almost beat him up. George, what George, what George happened man. to him? And your wife was know. complaining at the time. Where, where is that guy? I don't know what happened. To Mr. G George, was, I was getting mad watching that. I don't like that fucking guy. I don't know why. He no, because he he it's stepped over the line. Greg. You don't talk He's about like the most yellow kid. guy in, in person. I know, but I don't like that. You don't rank your boys down. No fucking mob guy would come in and go, you motherfucker, you cocksucker, your kid, you're this. He's no not. Guy he's, would do that. he's like a like a like a Jersey Shore guy. That that's I, his, no, I get yeah. the shtick, but I I know I know guys like that. I I, I if I would I felt the same way George did. I don't like it if you don't never talk <laughs> about family ever. Yeah. And you don't talk about your boys either. You know ne- you never put your boys down. Like look at you, you cocksucker, you too, you motherfucker. You don't do that. Never, ever, he ever. Did, he, he did a movie. He made a movie. That's when he came to my school. He did a movie mocking yeah. people. Yeah, yeah well, uh, he's lucky you didn't knock him the fuck out. I wouldn't like yeah, that. I thought that, was, I thought that was coming. I was. Yeah, of yeah. course. I, yeah. I could see George to jump in there. Yeah. Did you I see my face? I think kid? George realized that he was fucking crazy and that he just, that's why yeah. he walked off. Yeah. George I, looked at him like he looked at that midget. Remember when George drew the midget? <laughs> He was ready to kill him. George, George, you didn't throw to midget. He hurled him. 
I know. <laughs> yeah. Last, last Then I call him flat his ears. When last he's clip. I had it. He's like guys. this. He goes, I'm supposed to win. Like, fuck you, you're winning. I'm the fucking main attraction. <laughs> Hold on. Last clip, guys, and, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. I, and, uh, yeah. That's a fucking every week yeah. event. So we Jimmy decided Russell, to do the a female skit. body we you remember? Me. We did a skit. Uh, at the one of the beginning of the shows where you had to wrestle two female bodybuilders. I remember. I don't think it even needs a setup. Let's play it. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Well, mute, mute, mute. Yeah. I might have played music the whole it's time. It's the whole time. I'm going to be the guy. What's this? I am going to hear the end of this. All right, look, look. The next match, you're going up against both of them. You beat them, everyone's gonna think the last two matches was a fluke. Well, you're my manager. I'm not gonna be a little freaking pep talk here. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> or match number three. This. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, oh, this is the latest. Oh. Oh. And your best of all time. My fucking. Hold on. I, I got it. I'm, I'm gonna play it without the music so that we don't get into trouble. He looks like Animal of Steel. <laughs> George What's the coach makes you rest in peace? Oh my god. Oh my wow. God. And that's uh, my friend uh, Michelle. How old were y'all there? This was about 10 years ago, right? Yeah. At least, yeah. Maybe more. It was great when we were all in the same studio. When together. did Melissa die? I mean, so remember what's his name? Who, the referee? Who's that? Melissa Detweller? No. No, um, that's uh, Melissa Coates. Oh, Melissa she Coates. Went, I can't see anything. I can't see shit. Take your glasses off. No, no, I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Melissa Coates just died like two years ago. Yeah. Oh, was it yeah. two years ago? Yeah, about two yeah. years ago. Well, uh, which one? The one on the maybe left? Or right? yeah. The one with the real blonde hair. Diego. Diego. Yeah, Diego, yeah. <laughs> There's another kid we made. <laughs> yeah. Look at his head bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. D Diego was a whole other sp sp string of stories that went along oh with the God. Diego. Yeah, he would bring the food. We used to let him come because he just showed up one day, and we just uh, and we said, "All right, if you're going to show up, you know, for the show, you got to bring something. You're an intern, that means." So, we well, plus he was food. living in a really deep ethnic neighborhood, and the food was amazing yeah. there. So, I always wanted to bring, you know, the, he the was latest bringing Colombian food, right? Colombian, Colombian food, food, yeah. And 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 he did in the beginning. He was feeding us, and we let oh, him on the show. Great. And all of a sudden, we we prepped him for a show. you prepped him for a show. Yes. Remember? Yes. And there, yep. and then he started getting like he wouldn't bring food anymore. And we're like, oh, Diego, what yeah. the <laughs> fuck? And then he went, he brought like one tin one time. Like, what the fuck is that? An hors d'oeuvre, you know? And and then he and then he got pissed off that we expected him to bring food. He was a fucking nobody from the street. We let him in the fucking door. Like, I don't know, what is this guy need a meal? And 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 the next thing you know, we have Diego. Like we're famous for this. You remember that, remember that couple that met on the show? Remember they came to the show? They, yeah, they got married. They were Jewish. And like, remember there was the one kid we had on the show, and then the girls saw the guy on the show, and then they, they wound up getting married and they came back to the show and said, Oh, we I saw him on the show. And they're both like we were like religious, really his like hit like Orthodox Jews or something like that. You remember that? Yeah, Morty, I do. I do. Morty remember. the Jew. Remember Morty yeah, the Jew? That yeah. was his name. Mort yeah. And then with that other couple we got together too on the forum. Um, uh, oh, uh, Dawn Allison. Dawn right? Allison, right? Yeah, yeah. And they got married at the uh, at the Olympia, right? In, in Vegas, and like yeah. it was the first time they met in person. Yep. Yep. They're still married, by the way. To this yep, day. they're still married. That was what, at least almost twenty years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yep. That was great. Remember, so we got we, Eugene married. Remember, we had a wedding at, at yeah, wedding yeah, at the yeah. And Eugene, Barbie, when you're growing no married. arms, we, yeah. we got our married yeah. too. They're not together. Eugene, by the way, the fans. It's the guy that was that came on the Russian guy on the. He's talking about Eugene Russian. Mission. Yeah, right. Eugene. Right. That's yeah, my boy. He's a good guy. Are they still I haven't married? Talked to Eugene in a very long time. I, I wonder how he's doing. I got are they still married? The two of them? No, they're not. They're not. What, uh, what about Barbie with the no arms? <laughs> I don't know if she's still married. Oh, she's around now. Because we, we did her. We did her wedding too. Oh, that's right. We did do her wedding. Wait, that, that's the girl with no arms. That was a Jimmy the Bull. In fact. It, it had it promised the mother that that she he was going to be like you know polite the, during the speech he was going to give. Oh, uh, <laughs> she, she said, I forgot. I, didn't I? Who did I send there? I sent Jimmy and who else? Jimmy. Uh, 
Jimmy went with who else, though? We sent two people. Jeff, the them. producer. Oh, right. I sent the two of them. It was yes. a disaster. Don't you remember? It was oh, an absolute right. fucking yeah, yeah. disaster. <laughs> they don't, Jeff doesn't travel well, remember? Nah. And, oh, and you put two of those two in there. Dave, that, there's material there. We got to dig this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had we had some fun times back then. We had some we had some interesting characters working for us. Every basically. week, every week it was like that. It yeah. is yep. because when everyone's yeah, together, like just here, if we were all in the same room together, it, the show would it, be like it was 10 a times. giant fucking Not play. Really what we're talking about, but uh, you know. I'll, I'll dig up some of the footage for future shows. But we, I got to wrap it up. We, we've been almost going two hours here. Uh, thank you guys for joining us live, as always here at. Uh, on after hours, and uh, we'll be back in course next week. And uh, you know what? I guess I have to dig up some old material because people seem to enjoy this uh, stuff that from the past, all the crazy shit we did. Believe me, I got I got so much video that probably most people have never even seen. Because remember, John, we didn't put this stuff on YouTube initially. No, we were streaming it all directly from the RXMuscle.com website because YouTube wasn't a real big thing when we started back in '09. So you have um, my gyno is- surgery on film. That's true. I, Dude, I, I saw that. That, that was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. When he's John snoring, snoring? And yeah. Dave's standing there talking and shit, and I hear John. <laughs> I'm like, holy fuck, how could he possibly I'm like, be snoring? Did you shut up already? <laughs> holy <laughs> fuck. I, I was sucking all his fat out of me, and David going, you fat bastard. How did you sleep through that, though? I, that was fucking crazy. Yeah, we did oh some funny God. stuff. All right. Well, guys, love you guys. Uh, be safe, and uh, we'll see you again next week. I love you guys. All right. See you later. Love you guys.